Hi there! Well, today I'm going to be sharing with you how I like to organize my grocery list. A while back I had asked for you to let me know the types of videos that you'd like to see on this channel. And a few of you mentioned you'd like to see more home organization, food, meal planning type videos. So that's why I thought I would bring this to you today. And I have to be honest that I'm not sure how groundbreaking it's going to be, but this is a system that works very well for me. I find that it makes my grocery trips much more efficient, more cost effective, and I don't forget items like I normally would. It is a bit old-fashioned. I will let you know that up front. It does involve pen and paper, but I really do enjoy this system. It does work out best for me, so I thought I would share it with you and let you know how I do it. So the first thing that I use to organize my grocery list is just a notebook. I usually purchase these at my grocery store. They're about a dollar. You can also find them at the dollar store or anywhere school supplies are sold. Nothing special about this, just a college ruled notebook. So what I do every week is just take a sheet of paper from the notebook like this, and then I write down different categories that I need to shop for. I use this same format every single week. It hasn't changed in years, but I have found that it's a a really good way for me to divide these items up into categories so that I don't forget anything. If I just write down a list from top to bottom of some of the things that we need, I'll find myself going back and forth across the grocery store. I won't get everything that I need in a certain section. It makes my trips really inefficient and I find that more often than not I will forget things. So what I like to do is fold the sheet of paper in half and I'm going to go through the sections that I divide this into for you. So first I have dairy here at the top, then I have meat, next is produce, then down here at the bottom I have frozen, and going to the next side I have miscellaneous, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and then I have deli slash bakery. And then down here at the bottom, other, and I'll also explain that a little bit more so to you. So I thought I would talk to you about how I organize each category. A little bit of this is going to be self-explanatory, but I still thought I would go through it with you briefly and talk about some of the sections that might not be a little bit more straightforward. So of course here at the top I have dairy. I classify dairy as anything like butter, milk, eggs, cheese, anything that would go along those lines, sour cream, that would go into this category. Next I have meat, so of course that's self-explanatory. That's going to be any types of beef or chicken items that I would need. And then down here I have produce. Again, very straightforward. Any produce I need for my meal planning. And then frozen. This can be anything from frozen waffles to vegetables, fish, anything that would be in the frozen section. Now here on the other side, this is where it might be a little bit different than how um, you might normally see a grocery list divided up. But I use my miscellaneous section for a large portion of my grocery list. This would be anything to me that doesn't fall into some of the other fresh items. So miscellaneous can be anything from coffee to pasta, cereals, just anything that doesn't fall into produce, meats, dairy, or frozen. So this does encompass a lot. I have to be sure as I'm going through the grocery store, I really keep an eye on the miscellaneous section because that is an area that can be a little bit more confusing or I'm more likely to, to forget an item. And then down here under deli bakery, our deli and bakery at my grocery store are right next to each other. So that's a category that I like to keep together so that if I need to pick up a loaf of bread or I need to get some lunch meat from the deli section, I can be sure to have those items separate. I know normally you might think that lunch meat should go under the meats, but again, because of the way my store is organized, I find that that's most helpful for me. And then under the category of other, this is anything that is a consumable type good, a cleaning product. For example, this week I know I need kitchen sponges, I need some floor cleaner, or any toiletries, personal items, that always goes under other. I save miscellaneous for any food items that I can't categorize in the other sections, but other is always going to be things that are non-food related. So that kind of gives you an idea of the breakdown of the list. And then I want to move on to how I actually start my grocery list. So the first thing that I do is just write things into the categories based on things I know that we need off the top of my head. So for example, coffee is something that I buy every week. So under miscellaneous, I will put coffee. Um, also some of the things that I know my husband likes for his meals at work, I will put down the cookies or crackers, different snack things that I know that we might be running low on. And then I will talk to my husband, ask if there's anything in particular that he is running low on or that he would like, and I go ahead and put that onto the list. 
Now the next thing that I do is start with my meal planning. So what I like to do is go onto the other side of the notebook paper here, and this is where I do all of my meal planning. That way I can keep everything together on one sheet of paper. Now my husband doesn't work a traditional Monday through Friday schedule, so our meal planning is not necessarily just Monday through Friday. It can be any days of the week. So I write down the days based on what I'm going to be shopping for that particular week, and it does change from week to week. So on this week's grocery list, I am shopping for Saturday through Tuesday. Now my husband makes his own breakfast, so I just make sure that he has the items that he needs. For example, bagels or frozen pancakes or waffles, um, bacon, whatever he wants to make on his own. And then I just concentrate on what I'm going to be cooking and preparing for lunches and dinners. So I've got, for example, Saturday written down here, and then I have lunch and dinner, Sunday lunch and dinner, and so on and so forth through Tuesday. So I will go in and I will write down my lunch ideas and my dinner ideas ideas and then once I have the meal plan in place I go back to the other side of my list and I go through each meal and I just make sure that I have all of the ingredients needed for that particular meal so for example I already know that right now he will be having turkey bacon sandwiches probably on Saturday and Sunday so I'm going to go back over to my list and under the miscellaneous side actually I don't have anything for miscellaneous excuse me under deli bakery I'm going to put rye bread because I know that I'm going to get the deli rye bread. And then I also know I'm going to need some turkey lunch meat from the deli, so I'll write that under here. And then under the meat section, I'm going to put bacon. Now on Saturday and Sunday evening, I think I'm going to make spaghetti. He's requested that. So again, I'm going back to my list. I'm going to be writing pasta under the miscellaneous section. Also some spaghetti sauce that I use as my base for my meat sauce. And then I will go in and add ground beef to the meat section. And then with produce, I know I need onions and garlic. So that's how I go through. I just go through each day and make sure that I actually absolutely have every ingredient I need. Something else to think about are just the condiments and sides, things that you may or may not already have on hand. Um, I know like with the turkey bacon sandwiches, we have a deli mustard that we like to make with that, but I know I already have that on hand. So I really just do try to think about everything that would go along with a certain meal. And then if I know that we don't have it or I'm not sure, I go and check and then I may or may not add it to the list based on that. So anyway and then once I get to my store it's pretty easy I always start off in the bakery and deli section my deli now offers online ordering which is amazing so I will order any of the lunch meats and cheeses that I need ahead of time and then I could just go pick it up I'll go to the bakery and pick up our rye bread or breakfast items whatever we need and then I can go through there next is produce and so as I I think I mentioned this before but as I go through the section so whether I've got deli and bakery here or produce here. As I pick up those items, I will just X through the entire section so that way I know I've gone through, I've made sure I've gotten everything from that section, and then if I put a big X through it, I know I'm done and I haven't forgotten anything. And as I mentioned before, the miscellaneous can be the only tricky area. I really do try to pay attention as I'm going down each aisle just to go over my miscellaneous section a couple times, just make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Sometimes there's little things in that section that can be easily forgotten but um, overall I found that this this organization method works pretty well for me and I really do enjoy it I know some people these days prefer to use apps and things and for some reason for me that's always just felt a little bit cumbersome I feel like I'm having to hold on to my phone and scroll through it at the same time I'm trying to uh, juggle items that I'm picking up or things are you know pushing the cart or different things like that so for me it's just a lot easier to just have a pen and paper I think it's a little bit easier to work with for me so I hope that this was helpful to you I thank you so much for watching and if there are other videos that you would like to see from me that are household related or meal related please do let me know and I will definitely try to work more of these into my channel so I thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon Bye-bye.